So when I think about EOE treatment, and this is a conversation I have with families when they come into our clinic, um, I think of it as an either or option. So the way I think about this is I think about it as either medicines or diet. And the reason that we do things that way is simply not to confuse the issue. So if you do a little diet and you do a medicine, you don't know in the end whether you could have gotten away with one or the other, and maybe life would be easier if you just did the diet or just did the medicine. So that's the first approach. Um, the other question that we ask up front is whether the diagnostic endoscopy with biopsy was or was not done on an acid-blocking medicine, so whether it was done or not done on a proton pump inhibitor or a PPI. So if you come through the clinic and you have, I'll just give you an example. Say you have a lot of eosinophils, but they're all at the bottom of your esophagus. But say you have a hundred of them, but they're all right at the bottom, and you weren't on an acid-blocking medicine, what we probably would do is put you on a PPI and repeat the endoscopy with the biopsy to make sure that we really do think that you have eosinophilic esophagitis. Because if you happen to have reflux with just a lot of eosinophils in there, then all you need is an acid-blocking medicine. You don't need anything else. So I think part of deciding on a treatment option is to decide what's the easiest thing to do? What's the simplest way to fix the issue? So let's assume that you go, you go ahead and you do that and you, you're convinced that this person has EOE and they've been on a PPI. So now it becomes, are you going to do a diet or are you going to use a topical medicine? So that becomes basically a conversation with the family um, and what is going to be easier for them. So for some people, it's very important to remove the antigenic trigger. So they want to get rid of the source of the problem. And for some people, the diet elimination of milk, eggs, soy, wheat, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish is not necessarily hard. I try and think of it as an eat-only diet rather than an elimination diet. So instead of saying, these are all the things that you can't eat, you can still have rice, you can still have chicken, you can still have beans. And so Sometimes when you counsel a family that way, it seems a lot less daunting than to say, okay, you have peanut butter and jelly every day with a glass of milk and you can never eat that again. So, not never, but you can't at least for six to eight weeks eat that. Um, so that, I think family consideration is probably the very first thing to think about in terms of whether you're gonna use a diet or a medicine, because that's really what it comes down to. Um, the second consideration is whether the child is growing well or not. So if you have a child in front of you whose main calories come from milk um, and they don't eat a whole lot of other things and they're already having trouble growing, that's a child that I would consider using medications in so that they can continue to eat the things that are giving them enough calories and eating doesn't become more of a battle um, because you don't really want to turn food consumption into something completely negative. So I think about that as well. Um, and then uh, the other conversation piece that I think is important to have people understand when you choose a treatment option is that everyone's going to need another, another endoscopy with biopsy after you're done, whether it's a diet or a medicine. But with the diet, every time you put a food in, you're going to need another endoscopy with biopsy to make sure that your esophagus has stayed cleared. So if you take six, food, six foods out as you add them back in, you will need to have another endoscopy with biopsy. So that's the other thing that I think it's important that families know that before they make the decision um, about which treatment option is the most appealing. So I think the biggest bonus of a food elimination diet is that you're going to the source of the problem and you're eliminating it. As an allergist, you know, when you're allergic to something, the most important thing you can do is avoid the allergen. So if you can do that and it works for you, that's great. Um, so if you, and if you don't want to go down that, right, then it's topical corticosteroids. And how you choose which one you're going to use um, usually for us depends on the age of the child. So the younger child will always put on a budesonide slurry and that's because it's a liquid and anyone can swallow a liquid. It doesn't take any coordination. If the child is older, um, then they can do a puff swallow technique. It's not as sweet. You don't have to mix it up. Um, it's just easier for them to utilize that. And then we always, before the patient leaves, we always show them how to do it, whether it's an inhaler that they're going to puff and swallow or whether it is the slurry, we show them how to mix it, we show them how thick it should be, um, we tell them that they have to use it every day, we tell them if they skip doses, it's better to just be honest and push your endoscopy back so we get a really clean answer about what's going on. So, you know, we use the, the medicines in cases where patients, it's just too hard, it's not realistic. So you may be able to avoid all six foods at home, but if your child goes to school and is gonna eat those foods in, in the classroom or at school, then, 
you know, that's not a good option. Um, it's better just to use a medicine and not get to the actual antigenic triggers, but just go ahead and treat the disease and, and go from there.